Hey Rusty, you ready to help with this video? Huh? Get the tripod. Come here. Let's get set up. Come on Rusty. You ready? You gonna help? Or you gonna hide behind the Jeep? Well greetings out there in YouTube land and welcome to what I predict will be our most challenging, ambitious, and hopefully best video series yet. First, I want to spell out the goals for this video series. Uh, I'm going to describe for you the particular amp that I picked out that's going to be cloned and modified. We're going to take a look at the schematic and I will show you the modifications that uh, I advocate. Uh, then I'm going to prepare a parts list, select uh, the transformers, fabricate the metal chassis, uh, give you an overview of point-to-point -point wiring with terminal strips. We're going to design and construct the cabinet. Uh, then we'll cover the cabinet uh, with either vinyl or Tolex. Install all the metal parts, the speaker, the chassis, and the reverb tank. And then, once it's all assembled, we'll go through the startup procedure, uh, checking voltages, biases, and things like that. Then do a sound test. And uh, if we find that there are certain uh, problems with it or ways that it can be easily improved, we'll cover that also. Many of these points here are in response to specific uh, questions and inquiries that I've had. And hopefully this video series is going to solve a whole lot of uh, problems and questions for viewers. If this sounds at all interesting, then please stay tuned and join us in this adventure. The vintage amplifier that I've chosen uh, for this video series will be a Supro Tremoverb amp made by Valco between uh, 1964 and 1965. Don't feel bad if you've never heard of it. I hadn't either until just a few days ago. Now, as the name implies, the tremolo verb has both a tremolo and a reverb. Uh, it was produced in two different forms. Uh, the more common is the model S1622RT. It was double-ended using 6973s as the output tubes and had an output power of around 15 to 17 watts. Uh, the second model that they put out in an identical cabinet uh, was the much less common uh, model S6422RT, again for reverb and tremolo, and it single-ended with a 6V6 and has an output power of only 5 to 6 watts. This is the one I've picked to replicate, simply because I have never heard in my life personally a single-ended amp that had both reverb and tremolo. Both of them had 10-inch uh, Jensen C10R speakers. Uh, the tremolo was considered uh, in reviews that I've read of people that have actually heard these uh, be played, uh, these amps. The tremolo in both cases was considered to be superb. And it's very unusual because the tremolo uh, circuit output is applied to the first 12 AX7 preamp tube, as we'll see when we look at the uh, schematic. Uh, it's applied to the cathode of the first 12 AX7 rather than uh, applied to the output tubes, as we're much more commonly uh, familiar with, with most bias tremolos. While the tremolo was considered superb by most listeners, the reverb was considered to be very weak, uh, probably the least uh, impressive of the features of the amplifier. Okay, which is unfortunate, but something we're going to address. Also, you should note that Supro USA, they have rejuvenated the Supro name. Someone bought the rights to that name, and they're now producing brand new amplifiers that are for sale that are uh, an update of the S1622RT, which is the double-ended version. Uh, they're rated at 25 watts, and they're sold for about $1,300. You can check on the internet. There's all sorts of sites where, in which these amps are evaluated, and uh, you'll get to see them up close. Uh, but bear in mind that this is not the one that I'm going to build. I am going to go for the single-ended version, the 6422. 
Hey Rusty, you ready to get started on our new video? Can you feel it? Huh? You anxious? You getting excited? Oh yeah, I can tell. Now you may be asking yourselves, uh, why would I spend the time and effort and money uh, to build a single-ended version when in the same cabinet and for a little more effort I could have the double-ended version? Well, the answer is quite simple. I'm just one of those people who happens to love the tone of single-ended amplifiers. To me, they're like candlelight in an incandescent world. Uh, it's sort of like listening to a very, very wise man who speaks in a very mellow and soft voice. You have to lean forward and expend a little effort to hear them, but when you do, it's definitely worth the effort. And let's face it, I'm curious. I have never heard a single-ended amp that had both tremolo and reverb. Hey Rusty, you ready to get started on the video? Huh? Are you anxious? We're going to make a whole series of videos. Well, you don't seem real energetic. Okay, we talked about tremolo verbs in general. Let's talk about them now in specific, particularly the Model S6422RT, which will be the subject of this video series. As previously mentioned, they were only built from 1964 to 65 by Valco in Chicago. Uh, Valco also made, besides Supro, they made Airline, Gretsch, and National uh, amplifiers. And under these brands, they released the exact same circuit. But with Airline, it was the model 62-9035. Uh, under the Gretsch nameplate, it was model 6152. And under the National name, it was model 6422. The features of this amp are that, first off, and it explains a lot about the shoddy reverb, that the reverb tank was a very small one, maybe six inches or less long, and was located within a cardboard box on the floor of the uh, amp cabinet. I'll show you pictures of this when we uh, take a look at the physical form of these amps. Uh, the the 6422 had four 12AX7s. It really only used three and a half of them. Half of one of the 12AX7s was not really connected. Uh, a single X, a 6V6 output tube and a 5Y3 rectifier, a pretty standard. Uh, a very unusual feature is the fact that the bias tremolo output from the oscillator, uh, now this is not an opto isolator or um, a photoresistor type of tremolo, but strictly the tube type that we see uh, in uh, Fender Princetons and amps like that. But instead of being applied to the 6V6 grids right at the end of the amplification process to vary their bias, this tremolo output is going to be applied to the cathode of the very first 12AX7 tube. And Therefore, the tremolo effect is going to go through all the stages of amplification rather than just being tacked on at the end. Which may be responsible for the very high praise that this tremolo receives. Um, there is a 5 to 6 watt power output because of the 6V6. Uh, also, uh, it comes with a Jensen Model C10R speaker, as I previously mentioned. It's ceramic and 10 inch, and this is about a 25 watt speaker. Uh, the controls, you get a volume, a regular tone, single tone control. You have tremolo speed, but not intensity, and reverb intensity. Inputs, there's three. Two of them are 100K inputs, as opposed to, say, the 68K that we're used to seeing on fenders. And one of them is called a treble input with a 0.001 microfarad capacitor, which effectively eliminates a lot of bass. So this would be the input you'd want to plug into if you wanted an ultra clear, high frequency intensive uh, output. And these would be the regular inputs. Now let's go to the computer and take a look at some uh, pictures of uh, Supro uh, S6422RT amps, so you can get an idea of what they look like originally, and then we'll take a look at the schematic. 
You ready to help with this video? Are you ready? Come on, get to work on the video. Here we have a single-ended 6422 uh, Tremel verb for sale on reverb. As you can see, the cabinet is rather oh inconspicuous, we could say. Uh, it's sort of a tweedy-looking, typical Supro material on the sides uh, with the sort of uh, gold and beige grill cloth. All in all, now this, this comes in a couple different colors and styles, but this one is, seems rather plain, but still very attractive. Let's take a look at some more pictures. Now here's the rear view. Notice how wide the panel is from top to bottom, which means that the chassis uh, must be more like a cigar box. It's probably about three inches deep, but about seven inches long and probably sixteen and a half inches wide. Okay, you can see the 12 AX7s down uh, protruding here. At least three of these should have tube shields. Um, we have the uh, 6V6, 5Y3, and the metal can that holds the electrolytic capacitors. Down at the bottom is that odd little cardboard uh, box, sort of like a shoe box shape down here. Probably, what, would that be 7 inches long or less, 6 inches long? And the reverb tank, which is metal, is contained within it. We'll see a better picture of it in just a few minutes. Let's take a couple uh, looks at a couple more pictures here. Side view, side view, about the only thing unusual is this diagonal uh, stripe here, and the front view. Now let's take a look at a fancier version. Okay, now here's the uh, a much more visually impressive one in uh, kind of a red vinyl uh, leatherette with a beige, which I believe is really in real life kind of a gold grill cloth. Uh, real eye-catching. Notice that sort of a luggage handle on top. Let's see a few more pictures. Front view. Supro emblem. Ah, now we're starting to see what the control panel looks like. Bottom, sides. Ah, now the rear. This is odd to me. Notice that this panel is not as wide as it was on the gray one. We have the same four tubes. At least in this case, three of them have their uh, shields in place. And we have the reverb tank, not on the left side, but on the right. It looks like the same reverb tank, but it's been moved over. Here's a straight-on view of the back. Angle view. And here we see the inputs. Uh, notice that we have uh, regular, regular, and treble. This is the one with the capacitor that eliminates the bass tones. Volume and tone, a single tone control. Uh, then we have tremolo and we have speed, but instead of an intensity button over here we have the uh, input jack for the foot switch. And here we have the reverberation intensity uh, with another foot switch jack. And finally, uh, the toggle for the on-off, the pilot light, and the two amp fuse. Here's the rear with the cover off. We have the typical Valco shield here. It's a sheet metal shield over the input jacks to try to cut down on noise. Uh, we have our four 12AX7s. I'm not sure why this one doesn't have a shield, but other pictures I've seen it doesn't have one. So for some reason, uh, this one was left naked to the world. Um, and you can see a couple replaced electrolytic capacitors up here. And then uh, another typical Valco trick is not to have metal sides on the metal chassis here for the amp, but to have wood sides that fit in tight into this sort of horseshoe shaped chassis and then screw against the side over here. When you can't get your hands on a real cabinet uh, and chassis to make your measurements when you're going to make a clone, you've got to resort to photographs like this and make your measurements from the screen and then figure out your ratios, your length to width and depth ratios and the placement of your uh, different components. We'll go into greater depth uh, when we start designing the cabinet for this. And then last but not least, here's that crazy little reverb tank. And you can see it's a metal, kind of a typical reverb tank, 
that is suspended within this cardboard box and then there's a great big spring over the top that holds it all down to the floor of the amp cabinet. Here we can get a look at the chassis uh, for the red um, 6422 and you can see it's gold anodized. We've got our output transformer and our reverb driver transformer and a pretty healthy sized power transformer. Uh, the Jensen uh, C10R speaker is here in front. You can see a fairly small magnet uh, but a good sized speaker. Most of these compact amps only have 8 inch speakers so I'm sure they felt this was a major triumph to include a 10 inch speaker. And then here we, our final view will be of the chassis. It's really nice and clean here on the back and bottom. Uh, we can see the very typical Valco rubber stamping here of the tube identification with a red paint um, and uh, shielded cables uh, for our reverb tank and all in all a very nice looking unit. Well that about does it here for part one of this video series on the reproduction of the 1965 Supro 6422 Tremelberg. Two comments before we close. Number one, I have no intention of exactly duplicating uh, the original. I'm going to use some artistic license and alter the circuit and the cabinet to suit, which is sort of uh, one of the benefits of building from scratch. And secondly, I in no way advocate that everybody out there in YouTube land start reproducing Supro tremel verbs. Uh, I am just using it as an example to explain the process by which I do this and I can tell by the questions and comments I receive that a lot of you are curious uh, in this regard and I hope that this uh, video series will answer many of your questions. As always, I appreciate the time you take to watch these videos and I hope that you will join me for part two in which we will review the schematic of the tremor verb. Uh, Think about all the proposed modifications that would make it a better amp. And then prepare a parts list of the parts we need to order, and uh, including the selection of the proper transformers. I think you'll find it very interesting, and I hope to see you in the near future. Bye for now.